Hey guys, this is Mike. I'm going to do a little Heim breakdown here. The purpose of it really is just to uh, show people what Heims are and what accessories you can get for them. If you already know what a Heim is and spacers and all that, this is going to seem ridiculous to you, but it's really for those that are just beginning. I remember when uh, I was trying to figure out Himes and all that, it was difficult for me to get information. So I'm just putting this out there so that if people find it, it will uh, make things a little bit more clear for them. So to start with, this is a Heim. This is a, a three-quarter by three-quarter Heim. What that means is uh, it's got a three-quarter inch thread and it's got a three-quarter three inch hole going through it. They come in a lot of different flavors. Uh, all with different price points. Really, it just, the, the more expensive they are, the better they are. This one here is a middle of the road one. It cost, I think it was $20 a piece. On here is a jam nut. It's simply for the purpose of when you set it, you snug it up with the jam nut. These hymns you can get in right hand thread, left hand thread, depending on what your application is. And typically you'll have You'll have a heim, you'll have the uh, the jam nut, and then you'll have a bung. These bungs can come in a couple of different sizes. This one here is a three quarter inch thread. This one here is also a three quarter inch thread. These are round bungs. This one is made made for an uh, inch and a quarter tube. This one here is made for inch and a half. That's the only difference. Other than that, everything on the inside is the same. You can also get bungs in uh, square, and you can get them with uh, bolts to tighten them down rather than jam nuts and all sorts of other things, but for the most part, this is a bung. So you've got the heim, you've got the jam nut, you've got the bung. Uh, with whatever you were building, whether it be a, uh, a four-link setup, a control arm, a spindle, the nice thing about heims is the way they connect here, they're flexible, they move back and forth, and with the threaded bungs, you can adjust the length of them. So they're real good for fine tuning your suspension or your steering or whatever. You would set it to the length that you need, and then you would tighten down the jam nut, and then that would be it. This would be in the tube, and that would be your heim. So those are heims. Now with the heims, for the most part, there's three ways that you can install them. You can install them as they are. That would be a three quarter inch bolt going through here. And you can see the part on the inside here that rotates just barely extends past the edges here. So if you did bolt it that way, you would have almost no side to side movement. So really just throwing a bolt through here is not the way to use this heim. So what they do is they have straight spacers, which is what this is, <coughs> and they have high misalignment spacers, which is what this is, if you can see that. That's high misalignment. That's just a straight spacer, okay? Now you can also get these in different flavors. You can select uh, different size bolts that'll fit through them different heights, uh, various things. But for the most part, this is high misalignment. This is a straight spacer. These in particular are designed for a half inch bolt to go through them. So this part here goes into the three quarter inch hole that the Heim has. But then at that point, a half inch bolt goes through them, okay? Now, with these straight spacers, they give you some side-to-side -side movement. Not a lot, but they give you some. They're strong, but they don't give you a ton of movement. So for the right application, if you don't need a lot of movement, this is a good way to go. Like I have these for my the parts of my upper control arms that connect to the frame because I don't really need barely any side-to-side -side movement, so I want them to be strong. However, if you're using it for, like on this spindle, which is going to have to steer to the left and the right, 
you'd use these high misalignment spacers. Now if you look, the high misalignment spacers, let me get a comparison going here. If you see, the high misalignment spacer actually necks in and follows the contour, follows the contour of the heim joint, which lets it angle really far. Whereas the straight spacer is just straight. So that one, you know, rotates that far. So you can see on these two, these are both both angled at their maximum amount. And you can see the high misalignment spacer goes so much farther. To try and show that a little bit farther, this is the spindle that's going to be going on the front of my buggy. You're looking at it from the top. <clears throat> it's going to have upper control arm coming at it this way. Okay, the upper control arm connects to the chassis <coughs> with Himes using the straight spacers. Reason being, at the control end on the chassis, it doesn't have to go to the left and the right very much. <clears throat> However, on the spindle here, along with the spindle going up and down with the suspension, it's going to have to turn to the left and to the right with my steering. Now on the steering end here, if the heim that I used for the spindle was the straight spacers, I would only be able to steer it this much, which would not be enough at all. So in this application, we put in the heim with the high misalignment spacers, and then we can use up all of that angle movement for the steering in addition to letting it go up and down with the suspension. So in situations where you need a lot of movement from the heim to the left and to the right, you use the high misalignment. Where you don't need so much, you just use the straight spacers. So that's it.